All right, well, it's been a long time coming, but I finally have got the initial PCB layout all complete for the mom's timer. There are no unconnected wires and all the design rules are passing right now. I still have a lot to do. This is by no means finished. You can see there's a lot of traces that aren't, that aren't straight. I want to make, a, I'm going to pretty this up, clean it up a little bit. But it did take me forever to get something that was uh, actually everything connected and, and laid out. The right side of it is a, a lot cleaner. A lot, everything kind of worked a little bit better over on the right side. And I did spend a crazy amount of time working on that. Whereas the left side here where the microcontroller is at and the shift register, uh, this is just just try to throw something together as quickly as I could because I just haven't been able to make any progress and the uh, the layout kind of speaks for itself. It's not very good, <laughs> but it, it is everything is connected and you know this this uh, is passing all the rules. So to uh, to begin with this, um, what I did was I. Well, I got out the, the calipers and I got all the major parts and just kind of laid everything out and measured things to see ideally how big of a circuit board I'd like to have. And based upon the measurements that I took, um, I wanted it to be uh, 60 millimeters by 32 millimeters. That was the goal. And you can see that there was actually plenty of room for for that. The um, the wireless module here, uh, this is uh, the, the plug for it, so what, I'll, what I did was I left a little bit of an empty space here for where the antenna will be at, and I'll make sure that this isn't filled with a ground plane when I do it. So the, the way that the circuit board is, is shown here, it's, it's kind of the, the back of the unit, so like here's the seven segment display. And it'll kind of go in from this side and plug in to these holes right here. It'll kind of plug in like that. And then this will be all on the, the back of the board. And so I've got the mini or the, the micro USB connector over here, the charging LED, uh, the connector for the battery. Um, this is the USB to serial converter integrated circuit. There's the charger. There's the battery protection IC. It's the 3.3 volt regulator there shift register, the plug for the wireless module. Just got an expansion header here. Um, I've just got a, I just wanted to put a little uh, connector on here if if I figured out something to do with that A7 uh, input because I'm not using it right now. And then I put the 3.3 volts and the switch 3.3 volts on there in the ground. And then uh, this connector here is for programming the microcontroller to get the Arduino bootloader in there. Uh, this is the connector for the buzzer. Uh, this is the crystal for the microcontroller. And then this is the expansion header, or the plug, I should say, for the rotary encoder. The, it's going to be a daughter board, and it will just plug right into to that side there. Uh, you can see that I've put all of the... Um, analog parts, the resistors and capacitors. I oriented them all in the same direction. Uh, that's a little trick that I, um, I saw somebody recommend and I kind of wish I had done that in my last circuit board where they were just kind of going all over the place. I think it'll make it a little bit easier to, to build it with them all going the right, the same direction. And I tried to orient um, the, uh, the, SOT, the SOT 6 parts so they're they have the same pin one location. And then these three pin parts, they don't really matter, but I, I oriented them the same as well. So uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's all together. Um, one thing that I did uh, with the Eagle here that I found helpful when I was doing this, uh, let me just hit some undos here. Um, it's kind of a pain. Uh, there's a lot of grounds obviously that are part of the design. So all these little air wires that are shown are grounds that are not connected. And so I'm always um, trying to figure out which which side of the part goes to ground and not connecting it, because I'm gonna use one of you know, the, the, um, the flood fill. And to make the uh, flood filling easier to check things out as I'm going, what I did was I put a, uh, the, the upper um, flood fill 
polygon and the lower flood fill polygon off to the side here and then I can just click and uh, drag it over drag the uh, corners over in this case like that and then I can go and I can hit the uh, the rat's nest button and then quickly see if I've got something that's not connected to ground appropriately or not and then when I'm done with that then I just hit control Z a few times and put them back over there so um, so that was the other little thing that I started doing that made this a little a little tiny bit easier so I do have to go and clean up all these wires still but uh, finally got everything connected together so that's cool all right I've got all the wires nice and straight now the um, the power traces too have been improved so I've got some little bit thicker wires running over to them now and I've got the polygons that are used for the uh, ground fills I've got them notched out I was just able to use the um, little split tool uh, on them and that worked just fine just clicked and it split the the line and I was able to create this little alcove here for the where the antenna is going to go for the wireless transceiver. Uh, I had to go relearn how to put rounded corners on. I like to like to do that on my boards. So um, just for my own future reference, in case I forget again, I just go here and click on the little miter tool and then click the corner and drag it. And that's it. That, that lets you round it. I found that I could even um, round the polygon um, for, for the ground plane, so I've got it rounded on the inside here. Uh, I just, just found you could do that, and so I just did that just, uh, just for the heck of it. Um, I've got some holes here um, in case I don't mount it with just hot glue. I can actually put some screws in. So I think most everything is done. Um, I've got to do the silk screening next. Oh, oh yeah, the other thing I wanted to show too. Um, so some of my previous boards, if I hit the rat's nest here so I fill in the ground planes, um, have been, had really big areas where the ground plane isn't filled in. And I've got an example here to show. Like, so um, this area here isn't filled in, but if I were to move that via up a little bit, then this ground fill will be able to fill this whole area. So, you know, I'm not going crazy and trying to fill every single void, but um, I've just, just tried to improve how much ground fill I've got by taking a look and seeing if I can quickly make adjustments. So I'll just go ahead and show that too if I come here to the move tool and just move this guy up a a smidget and then I hit the rat's nest tool so it was able to fill that entire area in by just that little tiny optimization of my previous board sometimes I have this really really big voids where there's no ground fill so that's why I look to see if I could improve that with this one so yeah so on to the silk screening next and um, I will be done with this guy all right, well, late last night I finished the silk screen of the PCB and got it sent off to Osh Park. So this is what it looks like. Uh, it was really late last night when I finished it and I, um, I did screw up a couple things on the silk screen. So I didn't notice that my hole here had cut off uh, the date that I put on there. So, so that was kind of messed up. And then there's also some vias that are obscuring some of the lettering. So for instance, there's a via that's uh, right there that's obscuring the, the resistor, um, it's uh, resistor 19. So little things like that I didn't catch last night. So uh, I did go ahead and make the improvements to the board here. So here's that resistor 19. I just moved this via down a little bit so it wouldn't be obscuring it like that. And uh, of course, move the, the mom's timer. <laughs> main label over to the side. So I just made a few little uh, silk screening improvements um, after I sent it off, but electrically it should be just fine. I haven't caught any mistakes um, after reviewing things today. 
One thing I did since I uh, last made a video uh, uh, as far as the electrical connections was the power trace that goes over to the microcontroller. Before um, it was uh, this trace here, it was super thin. I actually had it going through between these two pads and it was really, really thin uh, trying to get it in between these. So I just reworked it a little bit and, and made a little bit thicker trace going over to the microcontroller since it is going to be driving all the LEDs and everything. So I wanted to make sure it has as, as large a trace as I could afford to do. Here's the daughter board that the uh, rotary encoder is going to plug into. And I'll show you the upload process that I've used for um, getting this over to Ash Park. Um, you can see, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty easy. There's, there's not much to it. Um, it's uh, mainly just to make it easier to assemble the thing so I don't have to do as much wiring. So if I, um, so I've got everything, I've got just the layers shown that I need to. Um, and before I run my design rule checks, what I've got to do is make sure that I show all the layers. So it looks like that there. And I'll hit the rat's nest button to, to fill everything in and just make sure that it says nothing to do down here. And then I'll go use the design rule check file that um, Oshpark uh, provides and make sure that uh, there's no errors that are, are bad. Right now the errors are just um, about masks and overlapping um, silkscreen so that's not a not an issue at all so this guy looks uh, just fine and I'll go ahead and um, use the Ash or use the spark fun uh, cam processor to export everything so I've got my uh, the spark fun one in a uh, Dropbox location so I can use it across different computers so I'll open up that and I hit process job and then that will have put a new set of files um, in here, all these Gerber files. And then I've got a little um, zip file here uh, or a batch file that creates a zip file of uh, all of the Gerber files. And so I've got my zip file here, and it's got the Gerbers in it. And I'll just drop that in a handy location. And then back on Oshpark's website, I can just go to their home screen and hit uh, Get Started Now. And then select my zip file that's got all the Gerbers in it. And it'll process. All right, the processing is done, and it shows a rendering of what it'll look like. So I'll just hit the continue button here and they have a little bit bigger rendering. So uh, if I was more careful yesterday, I would have caught the problems with my other board, but I'm um, just, just making a quick look to make sure everything looks okay. Um, the trick with this board is I've got to, got to make sure that I've got the orientation of the pins correct. Um, you know, this is going to be plugging in on this side of it and uh, this plug here, with all the connections that are going to go over to the main board, uh, it's connecting. It's going to be plugging in on this side. So I had to just make sure that I, um, I, I put this on the bottom side of the board by mirror, mirroring it. Um, but I've triple checked all that, and it looks okay. The, uh, the mounting holes look okay. So I think that looks all right now. Silk screen looks okay. So I'll just click on approve and order. It's a really tiny board, so it doesn't cost very much. So I will just check out. 